Welcome back everyone, this is Amanda All Day, back with another video. And in this video, we'll be taking a look at the other two figures from the Superman Page Punchers wave. This is going to be Brainiac, which is a weird looking Brainiac. And it's going to be General Zod, or in this case, it's called Ghost Zod. As always, I'll be talking about the figures itself, in terms of the articulation, sculpture, and paint. And if it's worth your purchase or not. Before we get started, make sure you hit the subscribe button to our support channel, put the key up to date, and watch videos like this. So let's take a look at the box or the package for each one. We'll start off with Brainiac. So there's a the front, the side, the back, the other side, top, and bottom. And then for Zod, the front, the side, the back. The other side, top, and bottom. All right, and then let's take a look at each figure outside the box. As always, it do come with a card. The front of the card looks like for Brainiac. The back of the card. One of the car looks like for Zod, or in this case, Ghost Zod. The back of the card. And of course, they both come with comic books, and the covers are going to be like the actual card. And the great thing about this particular page puncher's way for Superman, it's going to be a full story. So Brainiac gives you four out of four. So this completes, or the ending of that comic. And then... Ghost of Krypton is going to be 2 of 4, so halfway into the comic. So there's the comic. And of course, the comic itself, it does have that nice glossy paper. You know me with comics, I like the glossy paper, so it does come with it. They both come with a regular puck stand, and they both come with accessories. So let's take a look at Mr. Zod here. He has an open left hand. Very skeleton-like, right? Not much to it. He has an open right hand. He has a left fist. And a right fist. And for Brainiac, it comes with all these extra hands and tentacles. So if you want to put it on him, you can. If now you can have something like this, much more plain, cleaner looking. So here's one of them. You can see the nipper right there, and it goes in the back of Brainiac, and here is all the paint and detail. One of the things I do like about this particular paint is just going to be the fact that, one, you can really feel and see the actual detail on here, but also that paint. That brownish smudge paint looks like it's all oil and grease. It looks all dirty, but actually looks really darn cool. Here's another one as well, too. All right, same kind of color, and I like that a lot. Here is one hand, which it does not articulate from the looks of it, but look at that detail, right? The little nipple, it's all painted silver, but yet look at all that paint and detail. Look at that. That's pretty darn good. You have to admit. All right? Here is another hand, very, very, very tiny hand. Just look at that detail in that paint. Look at that. Look at all that. And the biggest one is going to be this one, which this one does articulate. You can see the actual joint right there. See? It kind of moves. It's a little stiff, but there you go. And just look at all of this detail, this robotic arm. Look at that detail, the paint, the silver, the bronze, and also the... Oh, just look at that. The smudge look, the dark browns. Everything about it, it, it looks really, really darn good. And again, it does articulate just... This, this is right here, articulate? I don't think this articulates. This is right here. This for sure does. This one. And, yeah, I don't think so. No, it doesn't seem like it. So, there you go. Alright, let's take a look at the ghost of Zod, or General Zod. So, we'll start off with the articulation. So, head, left, right, up, down, who we'll release. His left arm is somewhat... And not the greatest, but his right arm, pretty darn articulation. His left arm does hit right here, so keep that in mind. Uh, bicep articulation. 
elbow. And we'll do wrist, if I can figure it out how to do the wrist. Uh, there you go, wrist. And then we'll do torso. Ooh, really good torso. Swivel. So, leg articulation. Knees. Ankles. And toes as well. So, the articulation on this figure is actually really good, except for right here on his left arm because of the actual shoulder armor piece, but it's fine though. Now let's talk <laughs> about this figure. This is just, look, I said it before in the other video, I'll say it again here. Make fun, if you're watching this, you know what? Just give me all Page Punchers figures for DC because man, just look at all of this detail. Look at the hair, the eyes, the white eyes. You know me, I'm a sucker for white eyes. There you go. You got the painted teeth on there. But all that hair, right? The mustache on here. Look at that. The hair design. Very, very spiky hair. But the detail on his face. You can kind of see it. The detail. But it's there. And the great thing about it is actually glow in the dark. I did not know that. So this does glow in the dark. I have an image to the right. You can see what I mean. But this thing does glow in the dark. Which is pretty darn cool. Then you have here the shoulder piece on here. Huge shoulder piece. I like how... Or a base purple, but it has a little bit of gray on there. It's like a glitter gray, so you can see all that detail on the actual shoulder armor piece, and it looks really, really nice. Unfortunately, this does have the issue where the back is, well, not painted. The front, in terms of the actual armor, is good, but yet once you look to the back, it's like, really? Come on, McFarlane. Really? You're, you're, look at that. Nice painted silver paint and nothing. So, it's a bit unfortunate, but it's it's okay, though. Then you have here the arm. You can see a little detail here in the bicep, the tricep, where you can see a lot of detail right there. And then you have here the forearm, right? Then you have here like the general saw symbol on his hand, which looks really nice. And the other hand, there's going to be no symbol. Same kind of forearm, stylish. That's here, also present here. Same with the bicep. But of course, it doesn't have a shoulder because you can see the skin and again, glow in the dark, which I did not know. I thought it was just like a transparent green, but it's not it's actually glow in the dark. And it looks pretty darn cool. Then you have here the centerpiece right here. You can see whatever this kind of symbol is. Again, I have not read the book, so I don't know the context of what's going on here. But you can see how it's kind of ripped up. A little bit of the armor right here around his chest. The obliques. And the back as well, too. And so, overall, let's do the actual abdomen. Look at that. Very thin abdomen, but again, glow in the dark. Man, this is a great looking General Zod figure. Or Ghost Zod. And so, overall, I gotta say, the upper body on this figure, it looks really, really good. Is it different than the typical Zod figure? Of course. When I think of General Zod, I think of the one over here, which I compared in a bit, but... Man, this is a great looking figure. The detail, the sculpture design, the glow in the dark translucent paint, and the actual uh, plastic piece on it, you can see through it a little bit. Top notch. And the headpiece as well, too. Top notch. Now, does he do squats? Uh, we can't tell because, well, he has whatever this is here, but there's that. There's the back of the legs, the hamstrings. More detail here. Same kind of style that's on here. Also present on here on the tricep. But there is the back of the legs. Right? Back of the boot. Just look at all of this detail. Unfortunately, it's not painted. It's just like a matte dark black. Which is... It's fine. I wish it was painted a little bit gray here. Which I'm pretty sure people who customize it could probably paint like here this like silver or gray. Make it pop. But just look at all of that detail. And the hamstrings and the boots as well too. So much detail. You gotta admit, McFarlane did a really good job with this particular figure. And there's the side of the boot. <laughs> and again, you can see perfectly here how the front, nice painted. And then you look to the side, it's like, oh, okay. And then nothing. So, it's it's a bummer, but it's all good, though. There's the front of the boot. So much detail in the leg and the paint. I do like that silver glitterish kind of paint. You can see here what I mean. Like that silver. When you have a light on it like I do. It just shines very very nicely. Really detailed in terms of the boot. The feet are kind of plain. Not much to it. The knee pads look nice as well too. 
and the legs itself, the thighs, more of that textural design that's on the tricep, also present here in the thighs as well too. So you can see that, see that detail right there. There you go, you can see that right there. And I like how it's actually ripped right here, look like it's some kind of damage or something. And here there's in indented on there, you can see right here, see that? Man, then you have the General Zada logo on here and the torso as well too. Also right here as well, the detail, you can really feel this. This texture on here, which looks feels good. Overall, this is a great looking figure. And for the price that you're paying for this, again, it's a different looking, different iteration of Zod. But you know what? To me, I think McFarlane did a really good job with this particular Zod figure. The glow in the dark, the detail, the design, everything about it to me, it is just fantastic. And for the price that you're paying for this, and it comes with accessories and a comic, come on, this is easily a must buy. So, man, for Superman, McFarlane went all out and did a fantastic job with the Superman page bunches wave. So, loving this figure. Now let's take a look at Brainiac. So, we'll start off with the articulation. So, head... Left, right, up, down. That's all right. Shoulder-ish articulation. It's kind of weird. Bicep is almost like it's actual right there. And then, of course, the elbow. And then wrist-ish, which this one, it does articulate. There you go. It's a little stiff right now. This one, I believe, is articulates as well, too. I No, this one does not. This one does. Torso, there is, well, there is some, not a whole lot. It's already kind of bent. And then there's swivel, right? Then there's leg articulation, knees, ooh, pretty loose on there, ankles. And from what I can tell, there's no toes, so no toes articulation. So overall, the articulation on the figure, it's, it's not bad, it's just mixed. Like, there's no toe. The torso is a little weird. This one has no wrist on here, but everything else is fine. Now, I'll be honest. When I first saw this, I'm like, this is the most ridiculous figure of a Brainiac interpretation. And I still <laughs> abide by that because this is not a... If you were to show me this figure by itself, I'd be like, I don't know who this is. Maybe a, a Brainiac... Uh, machine that he created because I, I have a feeling that many people can buy like multiple of these have like this be your main brainiac and this is going to be his like his little robots or whatever that do all this killing and so it does not look like brainiac but i don't care because this is a great looking headpiece one you got the pink paint on there which looks like it's going to be sticker which is a bit unfortunate because you can actually see a little bit of that sticker in the eyes Maybe it's just made back. It's, to me, it seems like it's a sticker. And it has a pink outline with the white eyes. So you can see that little... I don't want to say Brainiac logo, but this little design right there. Then you have the weird like nose and mouth type of thing. And of course, the weird oddly shaped head. And the design of it as well too. And of course, that paint. That paint of like the brown, dark brown, just smudged all over it. Like I said... With the accessories, it looks like it's just all oiled up and dirty. But it looks <laughs> really, really good. It's a great looking headpiece on this Brainiac. Again, it doesn't look like Brainiac to me, but the headpiece itself, it is just top notch. And then you have here the, the arms. Unfortunately, the joints, you once you see them, they're just like, oh, they're just there. It's not bad, it's just, yeah, it's one of those, you can't unsee it, but it's okay though. Especially right here. See that? But the arms itself, again, more of the weird kind of brownish. A little bit of black, dark brown paint smudge all over it. And the detail as well, too. Just look at all this detail. Look at that. Look at that. It just pops. It just looks like it, it did an oil change. And that oil just splattered all over this particular uh, robot. And here is the end result of that. Then you have the forearm on here. Then you have this hand on here. Look at that. The detail and the paint. Again, more of that brown. It just looks really, really good. And the other side, more design. So here's going to be the shoulder piece-ish. Look at that textured and detail of it. Look at that. All that detail. And again, for $25, you're 
You gotta admit, this is a great, just look at that right there. Great design and detail. Oddly looking, of course, but I don't care, because this is such a badass design. Just look at that. Look at all that. <laughs> this is crazy. This is what McFarlane does. This is McFarlane at his best. He does weird designs, and it's one of those, like, what the hell is that? But once you get it, you're like, I'm kind of glad I got one. And here is going to be that upper body. More of that pink paint. This is more darker. I wish the paint was consistent with the eyes, but not a big deal for me. But just look at the design of the upper torso. Look at that. And the paint as well, too. Just look at all that detail. Look at all that. And the neck as well, too. Look at the neck, too. Come on. You have to admit. This is a good-looking figure. Then, here is going to be the back. Now, you see the holes on here? That's where you could put all this weird accessories type of thing. Right? So, you can play play around with it. Kind of have a cool, really cool design if you want to have it. Looks like it was like here, so if you want to have it like that type of thing, or if you want to have it right here underneath, right? Or you want to have it on this side, you get the idea. So you can play around with it and kind of customize it per se, however you want. So I actually like that. So thank you, McFarlane, for that. But again, the design, the detail, the paint. And the cool thing, you can see a face on here. See the little face? This is the teeth, the mouth, the little lips, and the eyes. The eyes. I, I McFarlane, anything that I noticed, I noticed that immediately. So, once again, here is going to be the teeth, the lower lip, right? The nose right here, and the eyes, eyes. Really cool design, but just look at the paint and the detail. Look at all that. How come this one gets back paint, but this one does not? I'm not hating on it. I'm not hating. I'm just like, what the hell? But overall, I got to say... The upper body on this figure, top notch. And again, for $25 for what you're getting, oof. This is a great looking figure, man. And like I said, make fun of me watching this. I don't care. You know what? You can pause DC Multiverse. If you do more page punchers figures that come out like this, maybe do like a Flash one. Oh, we did a Flash one. Maybe do a Green Arrow one. Maybe do a Hawkman, Catwoman, Batgirl. The list goes on and on. I'm all for it. I am 100% all for it because this is weird looking, but it's fantastic. So I'm loving the upper body on this figure. Really, really liking this figure. Does he do squats? No, <laughs> he doesn't. What's a robot? But anyways, here is the back of the legs. More design, more weird looking design, but you get more of that weird black and dark brown and brown paint smudge. I call it the grease paint. That's just what I call it. But you can see all of that detail, right? Look at that, that right there. Look at that right there as well, too. That is just top notch. Then you have the side of the... I don't want to say boot, but you, you get what I'm saying. This is incredible. This is incredible. Then you have the feet as well, too. All right. Then you have the shins, per se. You don't really have shins, but you get what I'm saying, right? Just look at all that. It just looks like it's all just dirty. Like it's brand new-ish, but yet it has all this chemicals on it, like all this oil on them. It is just fantastic, man. So overall, this figure, man, this might be a contender for, you know, figure of the year type of thing. So much detail. The paint it just pops. The articulation is weird, but it works though. And you, you can actually... In a way, customize it per se to have it look a certain way. And so, overall, this figure, this is a great looking figure. Little details like here in the back, the paint, like I said, just amazing. This is fantastic. Fantastic job with this Page Puncher Superman wave. And so, wow, I'm impressed with this figure. But of course, the main question is is it really worth it? Should he go out and get these figures? I'll start off with Zod. Of course, for $25 for what you're getting. Great looking figure. Brand new sculpture design on the Zod. Then you have the accessories, which is nothing crazy. But you do get a comic. And again, for $25? Heck yeah. 
Brainiac, easy and must buy in my opinion. And for $25, definitely a fantastic deal. Like I said, $25, you get a $20 figure, you get a $5 comic, and you get the accessories with the great looking design and paint. For $25, both of these are a great deal and must buy. Regardless of the price though, what I think about the figures itself. As I mentioned throughout the video, the General Zod, we're looking, yes, the lack of paint in the back, which is unfortunate, but I don't care. Everything else makes up for it. Brainiac, the attention, the detail, the paint, just everything about it, and the fact that you can kind of customize it to a certain look with those hands and tentacles. What else can you ask for? So overall, what do I give these figures? They both get an easily, easily thumbs up for me. Definitely must buy to get these figures. Again, for what you're getting for $25. This is a fantastic deal. This is a really good deal. Definitely get them. I know the weird looking. I know this is not your typical Zod. Nor Brainiac. But you gotta admit, for the price, for everything you're getting, $25. Come on. Here we have Brainiac from the Injustice 2 wave. And Brainiac from Superman Page Punchers wave. Like I said, this to me seems like like the main Brainiac figure, and then this could be his like his robots that he creates and so forth. So I have a feeling a lot of people are going to maybe use that, maybe buy a bunch of these and have it like an army of Brainiac robots and have like a one main uh, Brainiac figure, like like this one right here. But nonetheless, here we have Brainiac next to well Brainiac. Here we have General Zod next to Zod or Ghost of Zod. And I believe this is the only Zod figure we've gone so far, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's the only one so far. Now we have this one, and like I said, when I think of Zod, I think of him like this, right? Like an armor, military armor type of thing. So seeing Zod like this is a bit odd, but it looks really cool though. So here we have Zod next to, oh, General Zod next to Ghost of Zod. Here we have the Walmart exclusive Eradicator next to Zod and Brainiac. And I'm curious, is Eradicator a villain or not? Because I remember watch, watching one of the animated series, and I believe it was a villain. Correct me if I'm wrong. But to me, I think this is still probably like one of the best capes for Superman. I like this whole style of cape. Is it weird? Yes, but to me, just very, very stylish. And it looks really cool. When you look at it from the front view, it just has a certain look to it. It's like, yo, look at me. I'm, I'm a badass type of thing. But nonetheless, here we have Eradicator next to Zod and Brainiac. Here we have Superman, a more somewhat classic looking Superman, really all buffed out, or I call him the Arnie Superman next to, of course, the other over-the-top, over-detailed figures, Brain, I mean Brainiac, Zon and Brainiac, so I just wanted to compare how these are ridiculously over-the-top detail, but then you have a more cleaner Superman design figure, even though he looks like Arnold. Here we have all the figures from the Superman Page Punchers wave. We have the Ghost of Zod, Superman, I believe it's Val Zod, correct me if I'm wrong, and of course Brainiac. As I said throughout the whole entire video of this video and also of this particular video for these two, these are a must buy. And again, for $25 for what you're getting, you have to admit this is the best deal for these figures. Whole entire wave, easily a thumbs up for me. Definitely get them. If you want to risk it, get it on sale, sure. But again, even for $25, I still think it's a fantastic deal for all four of them. I mean, for each one. A total of 100 bucks. But anyways, once again, this whole entire wave, top notch. McFarlane, if you're watching this, thank you. You finally made Superman non-more classic, clean looking. It's over the top. It is. But the great thing about it, you can customize it. You can put maybe just the armor, remove the armor, have one certain armor, and so forth. So, thank you for that. But more importantly, thank you for bringing in, finally, more Superman-ish. Because we've been getting a lot of Batman, so here we have Superman. So, once again, Ghost of Zod, Superman, Val Zod, and Brainiac. Thumbs up for me. For $25, fantastic deal for each one. Let me know what you guys think. Did you me these figures? Do you plan on purchasing these figures? Leave it in the comment section below. As always, make sure you hit the subscribe button, do not support the channel, but to keep up to date and watch videos like this. This includes an overview of Ghost of Zod and Brainiac figures from the Page Puncher Superman wave. And on to the next one.